Hi, my name is Victor Bart, and this is my 1965 Unimog 404 camper with a diesel engine. And in today's video, we're gonna continue working on the electric camper system. And I got a lot of Victron care uh, in it, and I'm gonna replace my old DC to DC converter with this uh, new one. So uh, let's uh, first show you what battery setup I have and what solar setup I have. So on the side of the Unimog in this box, I have my carriage. And there's a 100 amp hour HEM battery here with a 100 amp uh, fuse, 25 millimeter cabling. And my system will be lithium ready, but for now I chose this HEM battery because it was only 196 euros. And I'm building a small 12 volt system. And the Unimog itself is 24 volt and here are two normal car batteries. But for the camper it uh, will be 12 volt because I don't need much power and the glowing of the engine is also on 12 volt so that's also from this uh, battery. Right now on the roof there's one solar panel it's an used 190 watt uh, panel and I cut it for free so I couldn't use it for a while. And I'm redesigning my roof rack so it fits a solar panel better because this bar was on top of the solar panel and I got a lot of comments oh that's totally wrong but that was temporary because now I'm redesigning it and it will be angled down here and here will be a uh, support and not an extra uh, bar to the other side and it will be really nice and the shape angled down will be look super nice uh, on top of the Unimog. Right now the solar cables go in this air vent and into the box but that is temporary but now I clued on this solar junction box for uh, solar cables so I will make the cables through here and then uh, nicely on top of my uh, insulation uh, nicely hidden away and I use Sika Flex uh, 292 I think to glue it on top and it's really sturdy. This box was white but I used plastic primer and then uh, sprayed it sand color so it looks much better now. This 190 watt panel is 160 by 80 centimeters but as you can see I can fit here also a one meter panel and with the redesigned roof rack I can even fit up to a 170 180 panel so I can put here one super big uh, affordable panel in the future or I can mount three panels and I saw a really nice 140 watt panel that is I think 120 by 53 centimeters so that makes 420 watt on the roof that's also a nice option I installed my 130 liter water tank but more on this uh, water system in a future video and I installed a tank level meter in it. Right now I'm in the process to design the electric system and the water system so the box is insulated but not yet finished. I'm gonna put wood on the walls but first I want to have all the system working as I uh, like. Right now I can just rip open some insulation and do some work behind it so if that is all finished I will put nice uh, wood on the walls. So first we're gonna focus on the electric system. So what do I have here? This is what I uh, built many years ago. And this is what I gonna add to the system. And this is just a temporary board just to have all the systems first working. So what I had before is just two fuse boxes and 12 volt and 24 volt in the system and here we have my old DC to DC converter when I had a lead acid battery as my secondary battery system that was perfectly fine the Unimog is 24 volt the uh, camper battery is 12 volt also the glowing of the engine is from the 12 volt so I bought this SMC30 switch mode DC DC converter input 24 volt output 13.5 volt so it can charge lead acid batteries uh, output current 30 amps so a perfect unit for lead acid but this is like a dumb unit you can't set anything on it it just charges the battery and I have a switch on the dashboard to turn it on and off because if I just turn it on 
and the engine is not uh, running and the alternator it just drains my 24 volt system I think it's time to replace it because Victron has a much nicer unit with Bluetooth so you can set things so this is the Victron so this is the Orion TR Smart DC to DC converter with Bluetooth and it uh, converts 24 volt into 12 volt with 30 amps and this is the non-isolated DC to DC charger because for my 12 volt and my 24 volt I have the common ground connection that is the chassis and the box and everything is metal so this one it has just one ground connection but you have also the isolated version which is a little bit more expensive so if you are in a plastic camper or a boat without a shared uh, ground connection you have a version uh, that has the isolated ground so you have four connections here so you need to decide for yourself what's best for my situation but for in a car or a truck camper the non-isolated version is the way to go so the input of this unit is between 16 and 35 volts and the output between 10 to 15 volts and it's 360 watt 30 amps and you can uh, log in with bluetooth where you can set uh, what kind of battery it charges so you can also charge lithium with it AGM with it lead acid everything you can even set your custom profiles that's the advantage of the bluetooth and the other function why i chose this unit you can set a certain voltage before it's gonna charge the 12 volt uh, battery so if the truck is not running the batteries are probably 24 volt 24.4 volt something like that if the alternator is running it is probably above 26 volt so I can set this unit for example on 26 volt so if the engine is running and the alternator is making uh, power then it charges to 12 volt so I don't have to turn on and off this DC to DC charger from my dashboard to turn this one on and off I have a uh, simple relay here so I gonna reroute that because I don't need that anymore so that is the DC to DC converter on the Victron website you have a huge list of all the DC to DC uh, converters because you have also 12 volt to 12 volt uh, 48 volt to 24 volt 12 volt to 24 volt all kinds of options so check the website and they probably have the solution that you want and if you need more than 30 amps charging just use a second unit they uh, work perfectly fine with each other let's talk about the solar controller this is a smart solar MPPT 7515 which is a good match with a 190 watt panel and this unit is around 100 euros super cheap but this also has bluetooth so you can set up what kind of battery systems you have uh, also lithium ready you have also the blue solar but that doesn't have the bluetooth function and then you need the bluetooth module and that makes it more expensive than just buying the smart solar to set it up and this unit works super simple here you have the solar input and here you have the battery output and you just plug it in with some fuses and it just charges your battery when the sun shines in my workshop i have roof windows but they are more milky than uh, <laughs> see through so i can make three to five watt solar inside of the <laughs> workshop so that is not enough to do something with let's talk about my inverter this is the phoenix 12 375 this is a 300 watt unit and you buy them for 114 euros so super cheap and i'm gonna use it for charging my laptop and camera batteries and stuff like that i have a super clean uh, pure sine wave output so that is perfectly fine for sensible electronics as you can see my system is pretty basic right now just with a 100 amp hour hm battery i want to have run my uh, fridge 24 7 190 watt solar with a simple uh, charge controller and the idea behind it is i can always upgrade to a bigger battery to more solar if i need it but i first gonna use it with this and 
if I need, I can simply upgrade and a Victron unit will always sell easily on the internet. So that's also a reason why I chose Victron. Everyone knows it, everyone wants it. So a second hand unit is sold super easy. I also have a 500 watt water cooker, but this unit is not strong enough to feed that. But I bought this unit, I think 10 years ago, I never used it. And this is an 800 watt inverter, but this is not a pure sine wave, but a modified sine wave. So for uh, sensitive electronics, it's not the best options, but for the water cooker and some tools, this is a nice inverter. So my plan is to mount two inverters in the system. This one for the sensitive electronics and this one for the water cooker and the tools. And of course you can buy the Funix 800 uh, watt, but I already own this one and this one was pretty cheap. And also if I gonna upgrade it in the future, I can easily sell off this unit or keep it as a backup. For the two inverters and the DC to DC converter, I need to have big fuses. So I bought this Victron bus bar with uh, mega fuses. It's a pretty nice unit, but if you uh, order it on website, it says the Victron bus bar unit. And then when you get it, you get just a bag of loose nuts and bolts and the uh, pieces and you need to put it together yourself. And there's no branding on the package or this unit. So I was first thinking, am I uh, scammed or not? So I asked around on the Victron Facebook group and many people are confused about this unit. Also the Amazon reviews are super confusing that people thinking this is not Victron. So Victron just buy this product in China and just sell them directly off without any sticker of Victron or branding on it. It just says young man. So it's super confusing. Victron so please repack them or give better instructions with them or do something with it because this is just confusing the product seems nice it can handle up to 250 amps and you can actually find some info sheets on the website about this uh, unit so it's a legit Victron unit but it's super confusing. And to charge my AGM battery from 220 volt, I have this 10 amp CTEC unit and it has an AGM motor, so it can perfectly charge my battery. I gonna redesign this panel now, add the bus bar with the big fuses, even add a smaller fuse block. So uh, be right back when I have everything uh, changed up. I made a huge mess, but look at this. This is uh, a completely rebuilt system. So uh, time to try it out. Right now the 12 volt is on, only this one doesn't uh, turn on yet. And it is connected, so let's measure this point, 13.6. I think the fuse is uh, broken. Yes, this fuse is broken, so uh, let's throw it out and I have here a new fuse. Okay, that's working. Uh, let's see if this uh, one turns on. Power LED is on, no alarm. So I think this one is working. Let's put some load on it. The LED light in the camper box. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, the camper box LED is now running off the inverter. So that's working. So I think it's time now to uh, put uh, the 24 volt system on and uh, see if this one will work. The 24 volt is now also on, so this one is turned on and the Bluetooth light is blinking. So I can log in with my phone now. And we have 25 volt from the car batteries. So let's go to Victron Connect. And right now I didn't put the solar panels on the controller because I'm rerouting the cables. Okay, it found the Orion Smart. Let's uh, connect to it. And it probably will uh, download a uh, new firmware. Okay, it's now updating the firmware. And it had version 1.3 and now 1.6. And that's the nice thing about the Victron product, it automatically updates uh, the firmware so you don't have to do any difficult steps for it. So no USB sticks or downloading the right file, putting it on the right way on the USB stick. No, it's automatically. Your device has been updated, press continue to return to the device list. Okay, it says input 25.1 uh, volt and the output. 12.4 uh, function power supply let's put it on charger and then battery settings select preset HCM spiral cell so it set it all the voltages engine shutdown detection uh, I have a regular alternator start voltage 28 delay da, 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 da. I need to test it out with the engine running, what works. So I need to set it up uh, later. Can I just turn it on from here? I turned off the engine detect. Ah, nice. It's now bulk charging. And the voltage is 14.7 volt. Oh, it's now mm, <laughs> back to 12.6. Ah, I found the input voltage lockout settings and I disabled it. So uh, now it should charge. Ah, bulk charge, voltage 12.9, 13.9, 14.8, 14.7, also here on the display. So it's now working. Right now it's just using my starting batteries, so that's not the best way uh, with the engine off. And I will test it out later with the engine running and see what it does. But it's a nice app and you can really set it up how you uh, want to have it. And also the smart solar is uh, here. And of course no input because it's dark and no solar <laughs> panels connected. The Victron app really works well so it's uh, nice to see all the information. I completely redid the electric system. These are now just the fuses for uh, the lights and the fridge and the things in the camper. So this is the 24 volt part, this is the 12 volt part, this is the negative bus bar. This fuse box will have the fuse for the solar panel. Here comes in the 24 volt with a 30 amp fuse to the DC-DC charger. This line is 12 volt with a 20 amp fuse for the charge controller. And this big fuse block, the 60 amp fuse is also for the DC to DC. The 40 amp fuse is for the uh, Phoenix inverter. And this is for the other inverter, but I didn't install it yet. Here we have the C-Tech that's also plugged in. So this is 12 volt and a ground connection. Yeah, I really like this uh, system. I think it is much better than before. And right now the solar cables are up here. The solar cables are now routed through the box on the roof, but I didn't connect them yet because I want to have them um, uh, behind the insulation and that it comes out here and then through the switch here and the fuse. So that will be uh, done later. I really enjoy building the 12 and 24 volt systems with a nice Victron gear. It's just a pleasure to, to build it and route the cables nicely and with the right tools it's super easy to make the connections. And with this new nice fuse box it's just, yeah I like it. 
if you want to buy any of the Victron gear, I have Amazon affiliated links down in the description. And thanks for watching.